7.3 million dollars of EOS have escaped from a blacklisted account in EOS. In this video I'm going to go through how that hacker managed to do that and the vulnerability in EOS that he or she exploited. I hope you are excited, I am very excited and if you are make sure to hit the like button on this video and get subscribed to the channel. I know a lot of you are watching without being subscribed, I would really appreciate it if you actually subscribe to the channel and hit that little bell button. And before we begin, of course, want to remind you that uh, me and Ivan on Tech is actually hosting a free webinar on March 5th on how to make money in the bear market. You can check that out by clicking the link below. It's completely free. And with that being said, we're going to dig into the news here that a blacklisted account in EOS managed to transfer uh, $2.09 million worth of EOS. Or sorry, no, 2.09 million EOS away from a blacklisted account and that is in today's value value 7.3 million dollars and this is not a technical hack like we used to seeing this is not like a hacker breached some uh, part of the code and actually managed to transfer someone else's money no that's not the case here in this case this is more of a governance hack a hacker managed to hack the social consensus the social governance of eos so first of all, where did this actually come from? It came from a community group on Telegram that said on February 22, 2019, a new active BP, Games.eos, did not update the blacklist for EOS mainnet accounts. The blacklist is used to freeze accounts that were hacked. Due to the blacklist not updated, one of these frozen accounts attacker managed to transfer 2.09 million EOS. And we can also see here that it already is a proposed solution for this issue, which we'll talk about later on. And in order to understand that, we need to understand how the EOS blockchain actually works and how the arbitration process works, because that is where the hacker managed to find a small loophole. You probably already know that EOS is a delegated proof of stake blockchain. And that means that there are 21 selected block producers that are voted uh, into this position by EOS holders. And the 21 most voted block producer candidates will become block producers and these are exchanged as the vote tally changes they are exchanged in and out of these 21 block producers and uh, these 21 block producers are not the only deciding factor on what goes on in the EOS ecosystem there is also something called the ECAF or ECAF and it stands for EOS Community Arbitration Forum and this is this is almost like court they uphold the EOS constitution and they uh, participate in this arbitration process. If anyone has any claims against, against any hacker or if they have any issues with transactions, they can come to ECAF and uh, file a report or file a claim. And then ECAF will take a stance against or they will actually, um, they will actually investigate the claim and then potentially take action if there is something in that claim that maybe violates the EOS constitution. So there is a social part of the EOS governance. It's not only about these 21 block producers actually verifying all transactions that comes in. There are also rules, social rules, that the block producers need to adhere to. So what happened in this case? Well, this ECAF community or EOS Community Arbitration Forum, they maintain a blacklist. So they maintain a blacklist of accounts that have in some way maybe stolen funds or have been spending funds in a way that uh, uh, is not allowed in the EOS constitution. So they have violated some rules and have therefore become blacklisted by ECAF. And then they're not allowed to spend their coins anymore. Their funds are frozen. And a lot of people have been talking about this throughout the, uh, the years or throughout the time that EO has been up. And this blacklist is decided on by ECAF, but then the block producers needs to actually implement these blacklists because it's the block producers that either allow or decline transactions to be added to the blockchain. And this is where the weakness comes in because it's enough that only one single block producer fails to update this blacklist or fail to maintain this blacklist in order for the transaction to go through. So all of these 21 block producers needs to have an up-to-date blacklist in order for a transaction for one of these blacklisted accounts not to go through. So that is a 
bottleneck that is quite large. And this is how the hack happened. There was one new block producer that were recently voted in to this, 21, this group of 21 block producers. And that BP did not have the, either the blacklist at all or the fully updated blacklist. So when that BP got into power and that BP didn't have the, black, the blacklist, then this hacker account that had all of these millions of EOS could transfer those into a bunch of other accounts and therefore escape this blacklisted account. And as I said before, there is now a proposed solution to solve this problem so that they no longer have to pass this black blacklist around. And that is under development and still is just a proposal. So hopefully we'll get that into the mainnet soon enough so that we don't have any more of these issues. Because I find it to be a very large bottleneck where, first of all, you have a central entity that controls the blacklist, that would probably still be a problem. I don't like the idea of having an arbitration forum that uh, works like a, uh, like a court. I don't, I don't appreciate that about EOS, even though I appreciate other things about EOS. I hold EOS, but I don't appreciate that. And, a part, and in addition to that, you have this setup where you actually need 100% of the block producers to keep an updated blacklist in order for the blacklisted uh, uh, transaction not to go through. That is a huge problem in multiple ways. Number one, that it's easy for blacklisted transactions to go, th to go through and into the blockchain. And number two, because in order to keep it updated, you have to have such a tight communication between all block producers that need, they need to be basically in a chat talking to each other. That makes it very centralized in my opinion. But I guess that uh, maybe that's only me. But as I said, solutions are probably coming. This is uh, a problem that should be able to be dealt with, with technical solutions. It shouldn't be this dif uh, difficult to solve, so hopefully they do. But now I want to hear from you guys. What do you guys think about this idea of having a central arbitration forum? Is that a good thing? Will that make it more humane and will escape you know, some of these blacklisted transactions? We can actually make it a system that works in the real world? Or is it simply a centralized way of taking control and also hit the like button if you enjoyed the video dislike button if you did not enjoy the video but in either way get subscribed and hit the bell button so that you don't miss my next video thank you for watching i'll see you in the next video